crafty friends, it's Sharon Luska here from My Crafty Greetings, and we're gonna be doing a card for Scrappy Tails today. I'm gonna to be using this gorgeous orchid die that Sabrina has designed, and it's just amazing. And uh, I absolutely love to add extra dimension to my projects by using my tools here. <laughs> These are Sculpey tools. I don't know what they're called, but do you know you could actually use cake, um, like fondant sculpting tools too? And there was a set available at Dollar Tree. Anyways, it's a layered, or bleh, 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 layered orchid die set. I had to get my mouth back from Daffy Duck there. This is an amazing die set, and she's thought of everything with this set here. Uh, from the background kind of color splashes that show up in the veining to the buds and the center that can be cupped as well as the little tiny clips. I absolutely love it. These flowers are all joined together so I've just got them face down after die cutting them and I'm using my sculpting tool, flower sculpting tool, cake sculpting tool, whatever you want to call it, ball on a stick. Uh, use your ball on a stick and a piece of craft foam from um, Michael's or wherever you can find it. Uh, no need to to buy special crafting mats, just a piece of crafting foam for a buck 97 and here in Canada is just gonna be plenty for you to use. And uh, we're just gonna give these guys some shape. Now I think multiple sizes of ball tools are fabulous. Uh, it really helps get the job done and taking a few seconds to do this really makes all the difference in the world. Now if you wanna craft flat, you craft flat, but uh, I do really, really enjoy the impact of doing this. So not not only am I uh, putting in from the front now, because I flipped this over, the separations for each of the petals, I'm also putting a few little kind of scratchy marks, because we're going to leave these as mostly white philodendron. Haha, <laughs> don't I sound fancy? White philodendrons, and uh, the little uh, kind of veining shows up through these white petals, so it's pretty if you think that you'd like to add that to it. And um, yeah, that's you can use a score tool to do that if you would like as well. So these can easily be all clipped apart and uh, used as individual flowers if you want to, but uh, I really enjoy the fact that they're together because it makes it fast and easy. Now I'm adding just a little bit of color to the center of these quickly, and this is just a cheap dollar store makeup brush. It's probably only worth 30 cents because I think there was three or four brushes in the set when I bought them. And uh, I'm adding a tiny bit of green as well to the tiniest bud here because it's still closed and usually on a, the white orchids it has that kind of greeny look to it. Now I'm coloring the stems in with shabby shutters here. Um, I end up using a Copic marker to darken them. So just darkening the bottoms of the buds and then using um, a white gel pen later on. I didn't show it with this, but if you just put some light scribbles over the top, it gives it that kind of white veining for the buds. You'll see in my final picture. There are so many things that you can do with this orchid and it is applicable to all things. Masculine birthdays, feminine birthdays, uh, sympathy cards, congratulation cards, thinking of you, hello, whatever you wanna do. An orchid is great for every kind of application and luckily this one does not need to be watered. <laughs> so I love orchids and I have way too many of them and uh, it's always an orchid care concern when we're going away <laughs> who's gonna water water the orchids. So I'm just overlaying these little pieces into the areas that they belong with a little bit of glue. And I also have these little clips here. I love that she thought of these. Oh, they're just my favorite. And I'll tell you why. We put them in our Shih Tzu hair. <laughs> My little puppies, we use these clips to hold their hair back. You can see Ziggy there. He's sitting on his daddy's desk, but that clip in the middle is actually an orchid clip holding his hair back for him. He's right before he went to the groomer, so he's a bit of a mess. So these little center pieces and, uh, that I'm adding in, and they're not the tiniest center pieces. They're just the normal sized ones. Pop them in. It really doesn't even matter if you get the right ones in the right places. They all work no matter what. But it just 
adds so much to these orchids. Now the other thing I'm gonna do too is I'm just taking a green Copic marker. I'm not even give, give, gonna give you the color because the whole point is use a magic marker that you have. And what I'm doing is just adding some nice green edges to these and adding some veining. And that is just gonna help build out the dimension on these orchids. Now naturally you could just leave them plain, uh, but this is what I like to do. Uh, it gives extra kind of drama to it and especially when this is our main focal point and this is the kind of thing that if you have friends that you craft with doing them up some orchids and just putting them in a cello bag so they can pop them on a card is such a thoughtful gift it's really one of those things that when people give me uh, those types of things to add to my stash that if I need to throw a card together quickly and it's already been all done up and um, you know all I have to do is place it it is so nice now I'm greening up the stem here like I said earlier and uh, just kind of giving the base of those um, little flower bed buds a little bit more kind of dark green because of course those stems are kind of mid to dark green as they're growing up to those little tiny buds and then later on I don't show it but I do add some little white scribbles with my white gel pen so you can see here how we've got that all done isn't that delicious oh I love it so much so once we've got that finished now it's just about building the decor around it and this is going to be an anniversary card a happy anniversary card for one of my friends and I used a die that I had in my stash that's for a pot but it was not the right shape so what I did was cut the bottom off and if you want to make sure you got it cut off straight fold it in half that'll tell you fast if it is now I couldn't use that corner chomper to get the corner off of this but I found another punch here that has cutouts that will work absolutely for this. So I just used a different tool to do the job. And you can see nicely rounded corners and we are bada boom bada bing done with that pot. So I have these two luxury papers, actually I have a pile of papers here that were all in the running for this card. And ultimately I picked the very pretty pearl um, handmade paper and then this dramatic, um, I don't know what you'd call that background. It's not a day mask, whatever it is. I'm trying to figure out on a five by seven card how wide I wanna make this. And looking at the pot and the flowers, I've decided that I don't wanna quite do three inches. So I do two and three quarters. I'm cutting it carefully and keeping the blade tight because it's that fibrous paper. And then I'm going to cut this piece three inches and then I'm gonna cut each cut it down to one and a half so I've got two side panels at one and a half by seven inches and that's going to help me get the space and of course looking at this you're probably wondering how the heck did she figure to put that pattern paper with the other type of paper sometimes I think about things in a matter of decor if it would look good in somebody's house it's likely going to look good on my card now I already have ATG on this card base and to line it up I'm taking a high angle so I keep it held up high until I get that edge lined up and then I just rock it back in place. So again, and I'm making sure I've got the same matching pieces here, keep it high so that only the edge of the paper is lining up with the edge of your card base. Once you get it lined up, then rock it back onto the tape. That's a great tip for alignment and getting things glued down straight. So the next thing I'm gonna do too is get this beautiful piece of paper in place here. I'm checking to make sure where my flowers are going to go. <laughs> and I decided that I wanted to stick the center portion of the leaves flat and then pop out the outer ones so that it had even more dimension to it. And I'm just adding on all my little tape pieces. I don't know why I did that first, but I'm peekabooing here where the center of my card is and gluing down this panel. And you can see how well those go. Isn't that dramatic and pretty? And then you add that, can you imagine that in a beautiful kind of Californian home as part of the, de the decor or a Floridian home? Now, pot placement. 
Where you go up and down with this pot is gonna decide a different look for this flower. I think I found exactly the right spot that I would like. And to make this all work together and allow it to marry, I'm going to be adding the gold happy anniversary over top of it. I'm only gonna be putting glue on the outside letters and then the central letters that are actually going to be sticking over the pot. The parts that are gonna be bridging from the base to the pot, since the pot has foam tape behind it, are just going to be free floating but first I'm adding a little bit of gold into the sides here that just kind of helps pull the project together and gives us a second spot on the project where the gold's going to be so there I have this already dry and glued and that is Tombow Mono Multi that I used there I added in some little gold baubles and that's my card finished I hope you can see the value of this. I'm hoping to do a series showing all the different things that you can do with this beautiful die set. My links will be down below. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, and give me a thumbs up and have an awesome day. Take care. Bye.